everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down for You. My name is Jessica, as always, and I'm here with my dad, Dr. Wright. Hey, Dad. Hi, Jessica. So, electricity. That seems like kind of a cool magic trick to, like, shock your sister and raise little pieces of paper off of the table, but how is that helpful in modern life? This is a big thing. At about 1800s, Orsted had one of these generators, and he was making electricity, and he was shocking things and making sparks. He holds a compass up to a piece of wire that was zapping with the generator and the electrons, uh-huh. and he noticed that the compass needle moved whenever the electricity went. Huh. And so he actually published that electricity moves a magnet, and he thought he was really smart, and he was. About a week later, a guy named Faraday goes, oh my gosh, electricity moves a magnet, I bet a magnet would move electricity. Because, you know, a magnet has a plus end and a minus end. Oh, yeah. Well, if electrons are minus, maybe they'll be drawn by the plus. And so he got a long piece of wire and actually dragged a magnet down the wire, like maybe pushing a little car Uh down a track. And sure enough, the electrons all followed along, like maybe taking a piece of cheese and a bunch of mice. The positive magnet went down the wire, and all the electrons just ran down the wire. And he did it again. And then he made a wheel. Then he turned the wheel. And sure enough, the magnets would rotate and all the electrons would be pulled along and he developed an electric current. And then he goes, oh my gosh, if I can make the electrons run down the wire, maybe if I put a magnet on like a fan blade, Mm -hmm. maybe when the electrons go by, it will cause the magnet to move. And sure enough, he made the first electric motor. And all an electric motor is, is a bunch of magnets glued to a fan. And as the electrons go by... They pull the magnet with them. Oh. And so it's wow. like, oh my gosh, it all works. And so if you ever go inside of the Hoover Dam near Las Vegas, mm-hmm. you'll find big gigantic dynamos about three times the size of a house. And all that is is a big fan blade that has all these wires around it and magnets. And as the water goes out the dam, it spins the big fan blade, the dynamo, and the magnets all push the electrons. And it all goes back to Orsted and the compass. Hmm. Electrons can be pulled by a magnet, and by doing that, you can make an electric current, which means you can make electrons run. And when you can make electrons run, they'll pull things along, they'll make fans turn, they'll make electrons, will jump through a computer and say go left or go right, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that's electricity. Electricity is simply electrons that you pack up and then let run. So... I'm confused, though. So if you have the Hoover Dam, I've always heard that electricity is not good with water. Well, you've got to keep the water away from the electricity. Oh, okay. So what they have is is they have these rooms set up where the water rushes through and turns this big wheel, mm-hmm. like a water wheel. Right. So now you have an axle moving really fast because the water is pouring through it. They've now glued magnets onto this and then surrounded the magnets with wires. So as the magnets turn... They pull the electrons along, and they sweep them through. It's kind of like milking a cow. As the hand goes down and the milk comes out, as the magnet comes oh, down okay. the, the, the line, the electrons are kind of pushed along. It's really fascinating to see it. Of course, then you get into a whole other thing with AC current and DC current, which is really actually quite simple. You know how they used to put clothes on a line? You'd have a wheel, and then you'd have a loop of rope and another wheel, and then you'd hang your clothes, and then you'd pull the rope, and the clothes would go out a little bit out the window. Yeah. And you put another piece of clothes on and you put it out the window. That's kind of how this works. When the electricity is flowing, it flows all the way down and it flows all the way back again. And the more the magnets are pulling this rope along, the more the whole thing's turning. And that's called direct current. And you can make all kinds of things work all the way up and down the line, which is kind of fun. What a guy named Nikolai Tesla did was he said, You don't need direct current. It's too much effort to pull that all the way around. All you have to do is grab the rope and go back and forth with it. You don't have to make all the rope go all around in a circle. Just make it go back and forth. And that's alternating current. Huh. And, of course, Thomas Edison didn't like the idea very much. But now we realize that Nikolai Tesla was really, really, really a genius. And if we had done it Edison's way, it would have never worked. But with Nikolai Tesla, you don't have to make the rope go all the way around in a circle. Just have it go back and forth about six inches, and you get the same effect, but a lot easier. I hope you understand. You should see my hands here. I'm pantomiming the whole thing. (laughs) If you can see my hands, you can really 
understand it all better. But <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I like the cheese and the mice. That's a good way of thinking about That's it. That's what I do you know, when I teach. I always have about a million of these. I have the cheese and the mouse. I have the car in the rack. I've got the, the clothesline. I mean, trying to make people understand these invisible phenomena is really uh, is really a joy. It's storytelling at the max. That's awesome. All right. All right. Well, thanks so much, Dad, for explaining all that to us. Everyone, tune in next week. We will have another delightful podcast up for you all. And yeah, and definitely keep the emails coming. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about, and we would love to talk about it. All right. Thanks so much, Dad. Bye-bye now.